section forty five of common sense in the household this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b common sense in the household a manual of practical housewifery by marion harlan ice cream and other ices if you wish to prepare ice cream at an hour's notice you cannot do better than to purchase the best patent freezer you can procure i had one once which would freeze cream admirably in half an hour i have forgotten the patentee's name and perhaps this is well for him since truth would oblige me to record an unlucky habit his machine had of getting out of order just when i wanted it to do its best my earliest recollections of ice cream are of the discordant grinding of the well-worn freezer among the blocks of ice packed about it a monotone of misery that had it been unrelieved by agreeable associations of the good to which it was leading up would not have been tolerated out of bedlam for one two three sometimes four hours it went on without other variety than the harsher sounds of the fresh ice and the rattling swash as the freezer plunged amid the icy brine when these were nearly melted without cessation save when the unhappy operator nodded over his work or was relieved by another predestined victim of luxury and ennui a battalion of the laziest juveniles upon the place being detailed for this purpose i verily believed in those days that the freezing could not be facilitated by energetic action and used to think how fortunate it was that small darkies had a predilection for this drowsy employment i shall never forget my amazement at seeing a brisk yankee housewife lay hold of the handle of the ponderous tin cylinder and whirl it with such will and celerity back and forth back and forth that the desired end came to pass in three-quarters of an hour that day has gone by time has grown too precious now even to juvenile contrabands for them to sit half the day shaking a freezer under the locust tree on the old plantation lawn machines that will do the work in one-tenth of the time with one-fiftieth of the labor are sold at every corner but so far as i know it was reserved for a nice old lady up in the jersey mountains the tidiest thriftiest most cheerful bee i ever knew to show her neighbors and acquaintances that ice cream could be made to freeze itself for twelve years i have practiced her method with such thankfulness to her and such satisfaction to my guests and family that i eagerly embrace the opportunity of circulating the good news self-freezing ice cream one quart rich milk eight eggs whites and yolks beaten separately and very light four cups sugar three pints rich sweet cream five teaspoonfuls vanilla or other seasoning or one vanilla bean broken in two boiled in the custard and left in it until it is cold heat the milk almost to boiling beat the eggs light add the sugar and stir up well pour the hot milk to this little by little beating all the while and return to the fire boiling in a pail or saucepan set within one of hot water stir the mixture steadily about fifteen minutes or until it is thick as boiled custard pour into a bowl and set aside to cool when quite cold beat in the cream and the flavoring unless you have used the bean have ready a quantity of ice cracked in pieces not larger than a pigeon egg the smaller the better you can manage this easily by laying a great lump of ice between two folds of coarse sacking or an old carpet tucking it in snugly and battering it through the cloth with a sledge-hammer or mallet until fine enough there is no waste of ice nor need you take it in your hands at all only gather up the corners of the carpet or cloth and slide as much as you want into the outer vessel use an ordinary old-fashioned upright freezer set in a deep pail pack around it closely first a layer of pounded ice then one of rock salt common salt will not do so well in this order fill the pail but before covering the freezer lid remove it carefully that none of the salt may get in and with a long wooden ladle or flat stick i had one made on purpose beat the custard as you would batter for five minutes without stay or stint replace the lid pack the ice and salt upon it patting it down hard on top 
cover all with several folds of blanket or carpet and leave it for one hour then remove the cover of the freezer when you have wiped it carefully outside you will find a thick coating of frozen custard upon the bottom and sides dislodge this with your ladle which should be thin at the lower end or with a long carving knife working every particle of it clear beat again hard and long until the custard is a smooth half congealed paste the smoothness of the ice cream depends upon your action at this juncture put on the cover pack in more ice and salt and turn off the brine spread the double carpet over all once more having buried the freezer out of sight in ice and leave it for three or four hours then if the water has accumulated in such quantity as to buoy up the freezer pour it off fill up with ice and salt but do not open the freezer in two hours more you may take it from the ice open it wrap a towel wrung out in boiling water about the lower part and turn out a solid column of cream firm close-grained and smooth as velvet to the tongue should the ice melt very fast you may have to turn off the water more than twice but this will seldom happen except in very hot weather you need not devote fifteen minutes in all to the business after the custard is made you may go into the cellar before breakfast having made the custard overnight stir in the cold cream and flavoring get it into the freezer and comfortably packed down before john has finished shaving and by choosing the times for your stolen visits to the lower regions surprise him and the children at a one o'clock dinner by the most delicious dessert in the world i have often laughed in my sleeve at seeing my john walk through the cellar in search of some mislaid basket or box whistling carelessly without a suspicion that his favorite delicacy was coolly working out its own solidification under the inverted barrel on which i chanced to be leaning at his entrance any of the following receipts for custard ice cream may be frozen in like manner do not spare salt and be sure your ice is finely cracked and after the second beating do not let the air again into the freezer if you cannot get dry rock salt that which settles at the bottom of fish barrels will do just as well keep the freezer hidden from first to last by the ice heaped over it except when you have to lift the lid on the occasions i have specified chocolate ice cream one quart of cream one pint new milk two cups sugar two eggs beaten very light five tablespoons chocolate rubbed smooth in a little milk heat the milk almost to boiling and pour by degrees in with the beaten egg and sugar stir in the chocolate beat well three minutes and return to the inner kettle heat until it thickens well stirring constantly take from the fire and set aside to cool many think a little vanilla an improvement when the custard is cold beat in the cream freeze almond ice cream three ounces sweet almonds and one ounce of bitter blanched and when cold pounded to a paste a few at a time in a wedgewood mortar adding two tablespoonfuls of rose water to prevent oiling three pints cream fresh and sweet nearly two cups of sugar one tablespoonful of arrowroot wet up with cold water heat one pint cream almost to boiling add the sugar and when this is melted the almonds simmer ten minutes stirring often remove from the fire and let it stand together ten minutes longer in a covered vessel strain the cream pressing the bag hard to get the full flavor of the almonds return to the inner saucepan and stir in the arrowroot until the cream thickens say five minutes when cold beat very light with an egg whip adding gradually the rest of the cream it should be light in half an hour then freeze if you wish to mold your cream in fancy shapes open your freezer two hours after the second stirring and transfer the cream to a tight mold having given it a third vigorous beating pack this down in ice and salt and let it stand two hours longer than you would have done had it remained in the freezer coffee ice cream three pints of cream one cup of black coffee very strong and clear two cups sugar two tablespoonfuls arrowroot wet up with cold water heat half the cream nearly to boiling stir in the sugar and when this is melted the coffee then the arrowroot boil all together five minutes stirring constantly when cold beat up very light whipping in the rest of the cream by degrees then freeze 
i cannot say certainly that this can be frozen without turning although i see no reason why it should not since the arrowroot gives it the consistency of custard italian cream two pints of cream two cups of sugar two lemons juice and grated peel two tablespoonfuls of brandy sweeten the cream and beat in the lemons gradually not to curdle it add the brandy and freeze it in a patent freezer or by turning quickly in turning the freezer open twice during the operation to stir and beat the content smooth lemon ice cream one quart cream two lemons the juice of one and the grated peel of one and a half two cups of sugar sweeten the cream beat the lemon gradually into it and put it once into the freezer freeze rapidly in a patent freezer or the acid is apt to turn the milk you may make orange ice cream in the same way pineapple ice cream one quart of cream one large ripe pineapple one pound powdered sugar slice the pineapple thin and scatter the sugar between the slices cover it and let the fruit steep three hours then cut or chop it up in the syrup and strain it through a hair sieve or bag of double coarse lace beat gradually into the cream and freeze as rapidly as possible you may if you like reserve a few pieces of pineapple unsugared cut into square bits and stir them through the cream when half frozen peach ice cream is very nice made after the preceding receipt with two or three handfuls of freshly cut bits of the fruit stirred in when the cream is half frozen raspberry or strawberry ice cream one quart ripe sweet berries one pound sugar one quart fresh cream scatter half the sugar over the berries and let them stand three hours press and mash them and strain them through a thin muslin bag add the rest of the sugar and when dissolved beat in the cream little by little freeze rapidly opening the freezer if it is not a patent one several times to beat and stir or you may have a pint of whole berries unsugared ready to stir in when the cream is frozen to the consistency of stiff mush in this case add a cup more sugar to the quart of crushed berries frozen custard with the fruit frozen in one quart milk one quart cream six eggs and three cups of sugar beaten up with the yolks one pint fresh peaches cut up small or fresh ripe berries heat the quart of milk almost to boiling and add gradually to the beaten yolks and sugar whip in the frothed whites return to the custard kettle and stir until it is a thick soft custard let it get perfectly cold beat in the cream and freeze if you let it freeze itself stir in the fruit after the second beating if you turn the freezer when the custard is like congealed mush tutti fruity ice cream one pint of milk one quart of cream yolks of five eggs beaten light with the sugar three cups of sugar one lemon juice and grated peel one glass of pale sherry and one half pound crystallized fruits chopped heat the milk almost to boiling pour by degrees over the eggs and sugar beating all together well return to the fire and boil ten minutes or until set into a good custard when cold beat in the cream and half freeze before you stir in half a pound of crystallized fruit peaches apricots cherries limes etc chopped very fine beat in with these the lemon and wine cover again and freeze hard in all fruit ice creams the beating of the custard should be very hard and thorough if you would have them smooth lemon ice six lemons juice of all and grated peel of three one large sweet orange juice and rind one pint of water one pint of sugar squeeze out every drop of juice and steep in it the rind of orange and lemons one hour strain squeezing the bag dry mix in the sugar and then the water stir until dissolved and freeze by turning in a freezer opening three times to beat up all together orange ice six oranges juice of all and grated peel of three two lemons the juice only one pint of sugar dissolved in one pint of water prepare and freeze as you would lemon ice pineapple ice one juicy ripe pineapple peeled and cut small juice and grated peel of one lemon one pint of sugar one pint water or a little less strew the sugar over the pineapple and let it stand an hour mash all up together and strain out the syrup through a hair sieve add the water and freeze cherry ice 
one quart cherries with half the stones pounded in a wedgewood mortar two lemons the juice only one pint of water in which dissolve one pint of sugar one glass of fine brandy squeeze out the bruised cherries and stones in a bag over the sugar add the water then the brandy and freeze it will require a longer time to freeze than other ices on account of the brandy currant and raspberry ice fine one quart red currants one pint raspberries red or white one pint of water one and one half pint of sugar squeeze out the juice mix in the sugar and water and freeze strawberry or raspberry ice one quart berries extract the juice and strain one pint sugar dissolved in the juice one lemon juice only one half pint of water end of section forty five Section 46 of Common Sense in the Household. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Piotr Natter. Common Sense in the Household, a Manual of Practical Housewifery by Marion Harland. Section 46. Ripe Fruit for Dessert. Oranges may be put on whole in fruit baskets or the skin be cut in eighths halfway down separated from the fruit and curled inward showing half the orange white and the other yellow or pass a sharp knife lightly round the fruit midway between the stem and blossom end cutting through the rind only slip the smooth curved handle of a teaspoon carefully between the peel and body of the orange and gently work it all around until both upper and lower halves are free except at stem and blossom turn the rind without tearing it inside out making a white cup at each end the round white fruit between them salade d'orange pear and slice large sweet oranges sprinkle powdered sugar thickly over each slice and pour a couple of glasses of wine on the top sprinkle powdered sugar over all and serve at once or the fruit will lose its freshness you may omit the wine if you like do not let any fruit intended to be eaten fresh for dessert lie in the sugar longer than it's absolutely necessary it extracts the flavor and withers the pulp ambrosia eight fine sweet oranges peeled and sliced one half grated coconut one half cup powdered sugar arrange the orange in a glass dish scatter the grated coconut thickly over it sprinkle this lightly with sugar and cover with another layer of orange fill up the dish in this order having coconut and sugar for the top layer serve at once apples wash and polish with a clean towel and pile in a china fruit basket with an eye to agreeable variety of color peaches and pears pick out the finest handling as little as may be and pile upon a salver or flat dish with bits of ice between them and ornament with peach leaves or fennel sprigs one of the prettiest dishes of fruit i ever saw upon a dessert table was an open silver basket wide at the top heaped with rich red peaches and yellow bartlett pears interspersed with feathery bunches of green which few of those who admired it knew for carrot tops wild white clematis wreathed the handle and showed here and there among the fruit while scarlet and white verbenas nestled amid the green send around powdered sugar with the fruit as many like to dip peaches and pears in it after paring and quartering them strawberries raspberries and blackberries never wash strawberries or raspberries that are intended to be eaten as fresh fruit if they are so gritty as to require this process keep them off the table you will certainly ruin the flavor beyond repair if you wash them and as certainly induce instant fermentation and endanger the coats of the eater's stomachs if after profaning the exquisite delicacy of the fruit to this extent you complete the evil work by covering them with sugar and leaving them to leak their lives sourly away for one or two hours put them on the table in glass dishes piling them high and lightly send around powdered sugar with them and cream that the guests may help themselves 
it is not economical perhaps but it is a healthful and pleasant style of serving them i had almost said the only decent one but i do not know who picked them cries mrs fussy no my dear madam nor do you know who makes the baker's bread or confectioner's cakes creams jellies salads etc nor for that matter how the flour is manufactured out of which you conjure your dainty biscuits and pies i was so foolish as to go into a flour mill once and having seen a burly negro naked to the waist with his trousers rolled up to his knees stand in a bank of fine family flour a foot deep in the lowest part on a july day shoveling it into barrels for the market i rushed into the outer air a sicker and a wiser woman i know god made strawberries doubtless says bishop bartlett he could have made a better berry but he never did the picker's light touch cannot mar flavor or beauty nor were her fingers filthy as a chimney sweeps could the delicate fruit suffer from them as from your barbarous baptism you would like to know who picked them i should inquire instead who washed them and in what i recollect seeing a housekeeper who was afflicted with your inquiring turn of mind wash strawberries in a wash and basin currants and raspberries pick the currants from the stem and mix them with an equal quantity of raspberries put into a glass bowl and eat with powdered sugar frosted currants pick fine even bunches and dip them one at a time into a mixture of frothed white of egg and a very little cold water drain them until nearly dry and roll in pulverized sugar repeat the dip in the sugar once or twice and lay them upon white paper to dry they make a beautiful garnish for jellies and charlottes and look well heaped in a dish by themselves or with other fruits plums and grapes are very nice frosted in the same way End of section forty six Section forty seven of Common Sense in the Household. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Laura Langston. Common Sense in the Household A Manual of Practical Housewifery by Marion Harland. Preserves. Use none but porcelain or good bell metal kettles for preserves and jellies. If the latter, clean thoroughly just before you put in the syrup or fruit. Scour with sand, then set it over the fire with a cupful of vinegar and a large handful of salt in it. Let this come to a boil, and scour the whole of the inside of the kettle with it. Do not let your preserves or anything else stand one moment in it after it is withdrawn from the fire. Fill the emptied kettle instantly with water and wash it perfectly clean, although you may mean to return the syrup to it again in five minutes. By observing these precautions, preserves and pickles made in bell metal may be rendered as good and wholesome as if the frailer porcelain be used. Use only fine sugar for nice preserves. Moist or dark sugar cannot be made to produce the same effect as dry white. Do not hurry any needful step in the process of preserving. Prepare your fruit with care, weigh accurately, and allow time enough to do your work well. Put up the preserves in small jars in preference to large, and when once made, keep them in a cool, dark closet that is perfectly dry. Keep jellies in small stone china jars or glass tumblers closely covered. You can procure at most china and glass stores or house furnishing establishments metal covers with elastic rims for these, which can be used from year to year. Cover jellies and jams with tissue paper, double and wet with brandy, pressed closely to the conserve before you put on the lid, or paste on the thick paper. Examine your shelves frequently and narrowly for a few weeks to see if your preserves are keeping well. If there is the least sign of fermentation, boil them over, adding more sugar. If jellies are not so firm after six or eight hours as you would have them, set them in the sun with bits of window glass over them to keep out the dust and insects. Remove these at night and wipe off the moisture collected on the undersides. Repeat this every day until the jelly shrinks into firmness, filling up one cup from another as need requires. This method is far preferable to boiling down, which both injures the flavor and darkens the jelly. Preserved Peaches Weigh the fruit after it is pared and the stones extracted, and allow a pound of sugar to every one of peaches. Crack one quarter of the stones, extract the kernels, 
break them to pieces and boil in just enough water to cover them until soft when set aside to steep in a covered vessel put a layer of sugar at the bottom of the kettle then one of fruit and so on until you have used up all of both set it where it will warm slowly until the sugar is melted and the fruit hot through then strain the kernel water and add it boil steadily until the peaches are tender and clear take them out with a perforated skimmer and lay upon large flat dishes crowding as little as possible boil the syrup almost to a jelly that is until clear and thick skimming off all the scum fill your jars two-thirds full of the peaches pour on the boiling syrup and when cold cover with brandy tissue paper then with cloth lastly with thick paper tied tightly over them the peaches should be ready to take off after half an hour's boiling the syrup be boiled fifteen minutes longer fast and often stirred to throw up the scum a few slices of pineapple cut up with the peaches flavor them finely preserved pears are put up precisely as are peaches but are only pared not divided leave the stems on peach marmalade pare stone and weigh the fruit heat slowly to draw out the juice stirring up often from the bottom with a wooden spoon after it is hot boil quickly still stirring three quarters of an hour add then the sugar allowing three quarters of a pound to each pound of the fruit boil up well for five minutes taking off every particle of scum add the juice of a lemon for every three pounds of fruit and a very little water in which one-fourth of the kernels have been boiled and steeped stew altogether ten minutes stirring to a smooth paste and take from the fire put up hot in air-tight cans or when cold in small stone or glass jars with brandy tissue paper fitted neatly to the surface of the marmalade a large ripe pineapple pared and cut up fine and stirred with the peaches is a fine addition to the flavor preserved quinces choose fine yellow quinces pare quarter and core them saving both skins and cores put the quinces over the fire with just enough water to cover them and simmer until they are soft but not until they begin to break take them out carefully and spread them upon broad dishes to cool add the parings seeds and cores to the water in which the quinces were boiled and stew closely covered for an hour strain through a jelly bag and to every pint of this liquor allow a pound of sugar boil up and skim it put in the fruit and boil fifteen minutes take all from the fire and pour into a large deep pan cover closely and let it stand twenty-four hours drain off the syrup and let it come to a boil put in the quinces carefully and boil another quarter of an hour take them up as dry as possible and again spread out upon dishes setting these in the hottest sunshine you can find boil the syrup until it begins to jelly fill the jars two-thirds full and cover with the syrup the preserves should be of a fine red cover with brandy tissue paper preserved apples firm well-flavored pippins or bellflower apples make an excellent preserve prepared in the same manner as quinces a few quinces cut up among them or the juice of two lemons to every three pounds of fruit improves them quince marmalade pare core and slice the quinces stewing the skins cores and seed in a vessel by themselves with just enough water to cover them when this has simmered long enough to extract all the flavor and the parings are broken to pieces strain off the water through a thick cloth put the quinces into the preserve kettle when this water is almost cold pour it over them and boil stirring and mashing the fruit with a wooden spoon as it becomes soft the juice of two oranges to every three pounds of the fruit imparts an agreeable flavor when you have reduced all to a smooth paste stir in a scant three-quarters of a pound of sugar for every pound of fruit boil ten minutes more stirring constantly take off and when cool put into small jars with brandied papers over them quince cheese is marmalade boiled down very thick packed into small pots it will turn out as firm as cheese and can be cut in slices for luncheon or tea apple butter this is generally made by the large quantity boil down a kettle full of cider to two-thirds the original quantity pare core and slice juicy apples and put as many into the cider as it will cover boil slowly stirring often with a flat stick and when the apples are tender to breaking take them out with a perforated skimmer draining well against the sides of the kettle put in a second supply of apples and stew them soft as many as the cider will hold take from the fire pour all together into a tub or large crock cover and let it stand twelve hours then return to the kettle and boil down stirring all the while until it is the consistency of soft soap 
and brown in color. You may spice to taste if you please. Keep in stone jars in a dry, cool place. It should keep all winter. Preserved crab apples. The red Siberian crab is best for this purpose. Pick out those that are nearly perfect, leaving the stems on, and put into a preserved kettle with enough warm water to cover them. Heat this to boiling slowly and simmer until the skins break. Drain, cool, and skin them. Then, with a penknife, extract the cores through the blossom ends. Weigh them. Allow a pound and a quarter of sugar and a teacup full of water to every pound of fruit. Boil the water and sugar together until the scum ceases to rise. Put in the fruit, cover the kettle, and simmer until the apples are a clear red and tender. Take out with a skimmer, spread upon dishes to cool and harden. Add to the syrup the juice of one lemon to three pounds of fruit, and boil until clear and rich. Fill your jars three-quarters full of the apples, pour the syrup in, and, when cool, tie up. Preserved green gauges and large purple plums. Weigh the fruit and scald in boiling water to make the skins come off easily. Let them stand in a large bowl an hour after they are peeled that the juice may exude. Drain this off, lay the plums in the kettle alternately with layers of sugar, allowing pound for pound. Pour the juice over the top and heat slowly to a boil. Take out the plums at this point very carefully, with a perforated skimmer, draining them well through it, and spread upon broad dishes in the sun. Boil the syrup until thick and clear, skimming it faithfully. Return the plums to this and boil ten minutes. Spread out again until cool and firm, keeping the syrup hot on the fire. Fill your jars three-quarters full of the fruit. Pour on the scalding syrup, cover to keep in the heat, and, when cold, tie up. Or, if you do not care to take the trouble of peeling the fruit, prick it in several places with a needle and proceed as directed. Unique Preserves Gather young cucumbers a little longer than your middle finger and lay in strong brine one week. Wash them and soak a day and a night in fair water, changing this four times. Line a bell metal kettle with vine leaves, lay in the cucumbers, with a little alum scattered among them, fill up with clear water, cover with vine leaves, then with a close lid, and green as for pickles. Do not let them boil. When well greened, drop in ice water. When perfectly cold, wipe, and with a small knife, slit down one side, dig out the seeds, stuff with a mixture of chopped raisins and citron. Sew up the incision with fine thread. Weigh them and make a syrup allowing a pound of sugar for every one of cucumbers with a pint of water. Heat to a lively boil, skim and drop in the fruit. Simmer half an hour, take out and spread upon a dish in the sun while you boil down the syrup, with a few slices of ginger root added. When thick, put in the cucumbers again. Simmer five minutes and put up in glass jars, tying them up when cold. Damsons are put up in the same manner as plums, but pricked instead of skinned. Preserved orange peel. Very nice. Weigh the oranges whole and allow pound for pound. Peel the oranges neatly and cut the rind into narrow shreds. Boil until tender, changing the water twice and replenishing with hot from the kettle. Squeeze the strained juice of the oranges over the sugar. Let this heat to a boil. Put in the shreds and boil 20 minutes. Lemon peel can be preserved in the same way, allowing more sugar. Orange marmalade. Allow pound for pound. Pare half the oranges and cut the rind into shreds. Boil in three waters until tender and set aside. Grate the rind of the remaining oranges. Take off and throw away every bit of the thick white inner skin. Quarter all the oranges and take out the seeds. Chop or cut them into small pieces. Drain all the juice that will come away without pressing them over the sugar. Heat this, stirring until the sugar is dissolved, adding a very little water unless the oranges are very juicy. Boil and skim five or six minutes. Put in the boiled shreds and cook 10 minutes. Then the chopped fruit and grated peel and boil 20 minutes longer. When cold, put into small jars tied up with bladder or with paper next the fruit, cloths dipped in wax over all. A nicer way still is to put away in tumblers with self-adjusting metal tops. Press brandy tissue paper down closely to the fruit. Lemon marmalade is made as you would prepare orange, allowing a pound and a quarter of sugar to a pound of the fruit and using but half the grated peel. Preserved Pineapple Pare, cut into slices, take out the core of each one and weigh, allowing pound for pound of sugar and fruit. Put in alternate layers in the kettle and pour in water, allowing a teacup full to each pound of sugar. 
heat to a boil take out the pineapple and spread upon dishes in the sun boil and skim the syrup half an hour return the pineapple to the kettle and boil fifteen minutes take it out pack in wide mouth jars pour on the scalding syrup cover to keep in the heat and when cold tie up first putting brandy tissue paper upon the top pineapple marmalade pare slice core and weigh the pineapple then cut into small bits make a syrup of a teacup of water to two pounds of sugar melt and heat to a boil heat the chopped pineapple in a vessel set within one of boiling water covering it closely to keep in the flavor when it is smoking hot all through and begins to look clear add to the syrup boil together half an hour stirring all the while or until it is a clear bright paste preserve citron or watermelon rind pare off the green skin and the soft white inner rind cut into strips or into fanciful shapes allow a pound and a quarter of sugar to each pound of rind line your kettle with vine leaves and fill with the rind scattering a little pulverized alum over each layer cover with vine leaves three thick pour on water enough to reach and wet these and lay a closed lid on the top of the kettle let all steam together for three hours but the water must not actually boil take out your rind which should be very well greened by this process and throw it once into very cold water it should lie and soak changing the water every hour for four hours for the syrup allow two cups of water to a pound and a quarter of sugar boil and skim it until no more scum comes up put in the rind and simmer gently nearly an hour take it out and spread upon dishes in the sun until firm and almost cool simmer in the syrup for half an hour spread out again and when firm put into a large bowl and pour over it the scalding syrup twelve hours later put the syrup again over the fire adding the juice of a lemon and a tiny strip of ginger root for every pound of rind boil down until thick pack the rind in jars and pour over it the syrup tie up when cool a very handsome sweetmeat although rather insipid in flavor the reader can judge whether as the charity boy said of the alphabet and the senior weller of matrimony it is worth while to go through so much and get so little preserved ginger pare the roots of fresh green ginger and lay in cold water fifteen minutes boil in three waters changing the hot for cold every time until very tender drain and lay in ice water for the syrup allow a pound and a quarter of sugar for every pound of ginger and a cupful of water for each pound of sugar boil and skim until the scum ceases to rise when the syrup is cold wipe the ginger dry and drop it in let it stand twenty-four hours drain off and reheat the syrup this time put the ginger in when blood warm do not look at it again for two days then reboil the syrup and pour over the ginger scalding hot in a week drain off once more boil and add again while hot to the ginger cover closely it will be fit for use in a fortnight preserve cherries stone the cherries preserving every drop of juice weigh the fruit allowing pound for pound of sugar put a layer of fruit for one of sugar until all is used up pour over the juice and boil gently until the syrup begins to thicken the short stem red cherries or the morellas are best for preserves sweet cherries will not do preserve strawberries pound for pound put them in a preserving kettle over a slow fire until the sugar melts boil twenty-five minutes fast take out the fruit in a perforated skimmer and fill a number of small cans three-quarters full boil and skim the syrup five minutes longer fill up the jars and seal while hot keep in a cool dry place strawberry jam for every pound of fruit three-quarters of a pound of sugar one pint red currant juice to every four pounds strawberries boil the juice of the currants with the strawberries half an hour stirring all the time add the sugar when you have dipped out nearly all the juice leaving the fruit quite dry and boil up rapidly for about twenty minutes skimming carefully put in small jars with brandy tissue paper over the top you can omit the currant juice but the flavor will not be so fine raspberry jam three quarters pound of sugar to every pound fruit put the fruit on alone or with the addition of a pint of currant juice to every four pounds of fruit boil half an hour mashing and stirring well dip out most of the boiling juice before adding sugar and cook twenty minutes more blackberry jam is very nice made as above leaving out the currant juice gooseberry jam is made in the same manner as raspberry only the currant juice is omitted 
and the gooseberries boiled one hour without the fruit and another after it is put in the fruit must be ripe ripe tomato preserves seven pounds round yellow or egg tomatoes peeled seven pounds sugar and juice of three lemons let them stand together overnight drain off the syrup and boil it skimming well put in the tomatoes and boil gently twenty minutes take out the fruit with a perforated skimmer and spread upon dishes boil the syrup down until it thickens adding just before you take it up the juice of three lemons put the fruit into the jars and fill up with hot syrup when cold seal or tie up green tomato preserves good eight pounds small green tomatoes pierce each with a fork seven pounds sugar four lemons the juice only one ounce ginger and mace mixed heat all together slowly and boil until the fruit is clear take it from the kettle in a perforated skimmer and spread upon dishes to cool boil the syrup thick put the fruit into jars and cover with hot syrup preserved figs the weight of ripe figs in sugar peel of one lemon and juice of two a little ginger cover the figs with cold water for twelve hours then simmer in water enough to cover them until tender and spread out upon a sieve to cool and harden make a syrup of the sugar and a cup of cold water for every pound boil until clear of scum put in the figs and simmer ten minutes take them out and spread upon dishes in the sun add the lemons and ginger boil the syrup thick give the figs another boil of fifteen minutes and fill the jars three-quarters of the way to the top fill up with boiling syrup cover and when cold seal up baked apples cut out the blossom end of sweet apples campfields or pound sweets with a sharp penknife wash but do not pare them pack them in a large pudding dish pour a cupful of water in the bottom cover closely with another dish or pan set in a moderate oven and steam until tender all through pour the liquor over them while hot and repeat this as they cool set on the ice several hours before tea and when you are ready transfer them to a glass dish pouring the juice over them again eat with powdered sugar and cream apples baked in this way are more tender and digestible and better flavored than those baked in an open vessel campfields are particularly good apples stewed whole pare and with a small knife extract the cores of fine juicy apples that are not too tart put into a deep dish with just enough water to cover them cover and bake or stew in a moderate oven until they are tender and clear take out the apples put in a bowl and cover to keep hot put the juice into a saucepan with a cupful of sugar for twelve apples and boil half an hour season with mace ginger or whole cloves adding the spice ten minutes before you remove the syrup from the fire pour scalding over the apples and cover until cold eat with cream baked pears sweet pears may be baked just as sweet apples are for example steamed without being pared or cored or if large cut in half put into a deep dish with a very little water sprinkle them with sugar and put a few cloves or bits of cinnamon or a pinch of ginger among them cover closely and bake until tender stewed pears if small and ripe cut out the blossom end without paring or coring put into a saucepan with enough water to cover them and stew until tender add a half cupful of sugar for every quart of pears and stew all together ten minutes take out the pears lay in a covered bowl to keep warm add to the syrup a little ginger or a few cloves boil fifteen minutes longer and pour over the fruit hot or if the pears are not quite ripe but hard and disposed to be tough peel them cut out the blossom end leaving on the stems and stew until tender in enough water to cover them take them out set by in a covered dish to keep warm add to the liquor in the saucepan an equal quantity of the best molasses and a little ginger boil half an hour skim and return the pears to the saucepan stew all together twenty minutes and pour out these are very good and will keep a week or more even in warm weather i have canned them while boiling hot and kept them sweet a whole year baked quinces pare and quarter extract the seeds and stew the fruit in clear water until the straw will pierce them put into a baking dish with a half cupful of sugar to every eight quinces pour over them the liquor in which they were boiled cover closely and steam in the oven one hour take out the quinces lay them in a covered bowl to keep warm return the syrup to the saucepan and boil twenty minutes pour over the quinces and set away covered to cool eat cold end of section forty seven recording by laura langston
section forty eight of common sense in the household this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by laura langston common sense in the household a manual of practical housewifery by marion harland fruit jellies currant blackberry strawberry etc put the fruit into a stone jar set this in a kettle of tepid water and put it upon the fire let it boil closely covered until the fruit is broken to pieces strain pressing the bag a stout coarse one hard putting in but a few handfuls at a time and between each squeezing turning it inside out to scald off the pulp and skins to each pint of juice allow a pound of sugar set the juice on alone to boil and while it is warming divide the sugar into several different portions and put into shallow pie dishes or pans that will fit in your ovens heat in these opening the ovens now and then to stir it and prevent burning boil the juice just twenty minutes from the moment it begins fairly to boil by this time the sugar should be so hot you cannot bear your hand in it should it melt around the edges do not be alarmed the burned parts will only form into lumps in the syrup and can easily be taken out throw the sugar into the boiling juice stirring rapidly all the while it will hiss as it falls in and melt very quickly withdraw your spoon when you are sure it is dissolved let the jelly just come to a boil to make all certain and take the kettle instantly from the fire roll your glasses or cups in hot water and fill with the scalding liquid if these directions be strictly followed and the fruit is at the proper state of ripeness there need be no dread of failure I have often had the jelly form before I filled the last glass. I wish it were in my power, by making known the advantages of the process I have described, to put an end to the doubts and anxieties attendant upon the old-fashioned method of boiling jelly into a preserve. This plan is so simple and safe, the jelly made so superior in flavor and color to that produced by boiling down juice and fruit, that no one who has ever tried both ways can hesitate to give it the preference i have put up jelly in no other way for eighteen years and have never failed once strawberry jelly should have a little lemon juice added to that of the fruit both it and blackberry and very ripe raspberry jelly are apt to be less firm than that made from more tart fruits still do not boil it set it in the sun as i have directed at the beginning of the section upon preserves and fruit jellies filling one cup from another as the contents shrink the sun will boil it down with less waste and less injury to color and taste than the fire will cooking jelly always darkens it put brandied tissue paper over the top of each glass when cold and firm paste a thick paper over it and keep in a dry place raspberry and currant jelly to two parts red raspberries or black caps put one of red currants and proceed as with other berry jelly the flavor is exquisite this jelly is especially nice for cake wild cherry and currant jelly two-thirds wild cherries stones and all and one of red currants a pound of sugar to a pint of juice and make as you do plain currant jelly this besides being very palatable and an excellent table jelly is highly medicinal good for coughs and any weakness of the digestive organs i put it up first as an experiment and because i chanced to have the cherries now i would not pass the winter without it unless obliged to do so by a failure of the fruit crop peach jelly crack one-third of the kernels and put them in the jar with the peaches which should be pared stoned and sliced heat in a pot of boiling water stirring from time to time until the fruit is well broken strain and to every pint of peach juice add the juice of a lemon measure again allowing a pound of sugar to a pint of liquid heat the sugar very hot and add when the juice has boiled twenty minutes let it come to a boil and take instantly from the fire this is very fine for jelly cake green fox grape jelly is made after the receipt for currant jelly only allowing a pound and a half of sugar to a pint of juice ripe grapes require but pound for pint quince jelly pare and slice the quinces and add for every five pounds of fruit a cup of water put peelings cores and all into a stone jar set this in a pot of boiling water and when the fruit is soft and broken proceed as with other jellies crab apple jelly cut siberian crab apples to pieces but do not pare or remove the seeds 
the latter impart a peculiarly pleasant flavor to the fruit put into a stone jar set in a pot of hot water and let it boil eight or nine hours leave in the jar all night covered closely next morning squeeze out the juice allow pound for pint and manage as you do currant jelly should the apples be very dry add a cup of water for every six pounds of fruit there is no finer jelly than this in appearance and in taste end of section forty eight recording by laura langston section forty nine of common sense in the household this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b common sense in the household a manual of practical housewifery by marion harlan canned fruits and vegetables within a few years canned fruits have in a great measure superseded preserves they are cheaper more wholesome and far less difficult to prepare attention to a few general rules will ensure success to every housekeeper who sensibly prefers to put up her own season's supply of these to purchasing those for double the cost which are not nearly so good first examine cans and elastics narrowly before you begin operations see that the screw is in order the can without crack or nick the elastic firm and closely fitting secondly have the fruit boiling hot when sealed have upon the range or stove a pan in which each empty can is set to be filled after it is rolled in hot water lay elastic and top close to your hand fill the can to overflowing remembering that the fruit will shrink as it cools and that a vacuum invites the air to enter clap on the top without the loss of a second screw as tightly as you can and as the contents and the can cool screw again and again to fit the contraction of metal and glass thirdly if you use glass cans and they are cheapest in the end for you can use them year after year getting new elastics when you need them keep them in a cool dark place and dry as well as cool the light will cause them to ferment and also change the color canned berries heat slowly to boiling in a large kettle when they begin to boil add sugar in the proportion of one tablespoonful to each quart of fruit before doing this however if there is much juice in the kettle dip out the surplus with a dipper or cup it will only increase the number of cans to be filled without real advantage to you leave the berries almost dry before putting in the sugar this will make syrup enough boil all together fifteen minutes and can huckleberries grapes blackberries currants raspberries cherries and strawberries put up in this way are very good eaten as you would preserves and make pies which are scarcely inferior to those filled with fresh fruit canned peaches pare cut in half and stone taking care not to break the fruit drop each piece in cold water so soon as it is pared the large white freestone peaches are nicest for this purpose firmness of texture is a desideratum the fruit should be ripe but not soft allow a heaping tablespoonful of sugar to each quart of fruit scattering it between the layers fill your kettle and heat slowly to a boil boil three minutes just to assure yourself that every piece of fruit is heated through can and seal it is safe to put a cupful of water in the bottom of the kettle before packing it with fruit lest the lower layer should burn canned pears for the finer varieties such as the bartlett and seckle prepare a syrup allowing a pint of pure water and a quarter of a pound of sugar to a quart of fruit while this is heating peel the pears dropping each as it is pared into a pan of clear water lest the color should change by exposure to the air when the syrup has come to a fast boil put in the pears carefully not to bruise them and boil until they look clear and can be easily pierced by a fork have the cans ready rolled in hot water packed with the pears and filled to overflowing with the scalding syrup which must be kept on the fire all the while and seal the tougher and more common pears must be boiled in water until tender thrown while warm into the hot syrup then allowed to boil ten minutes before they are canned apples may be treated in either of the above ways as their texture may seem to demand canned plums prick with a needle to prevent bursting 
prepare a syrup allowing a gill of pure water and a quarter of a pound of sugar to every three quarts of fruit when the sugar is dissolved and the water blood warm put in the plums heat slowly to a boil let them boil five minutes not fast or they will break badly fill up the jars with plums pour in the scalding syrup until it runs down the sides and seal green gauges are very fine put up in this way also damsons for pies canned tomatoes i don't hold with any of these new-fangled notions said an old lady to me when i mentioned that my canning was over for the summer i was beguiled two years ago into putting up some tomatoes in cans and if i am forgiven for that folly i'll never tempt providence in the same manner again they didn't keep then keep they spoiled in a week twas no more than i expected and deserved for meddling with such a humbug perhaps you did not follow the directions closely indeed i did i cooked the tormented things and seasoned them with butter and salt all ready for the table and screwed the tops down tight but in course they spoiled were you careful to put them into the cans boiling hot twould have cracked the glass i let em get nice and cold first i didn't suppose it made any difference about such a trifle as that poor old lady i think of her and her mighty temptation of providence whenever i can tomatoes for heat does make a difference all the difference in the world in this sort of work pour boiling water over the tomatoes to loosen the skins remove these drain off all the juice that will come away without pressing hard put them into a kettle and heat slowly to a boil your tomatoes will look much nicer if you remove all the hard parts before putting them on the fire and rub the pulp soft with your hands boil ten minutes dip out the surplus liquid pour the tomatoes boiling hot into the cans and seal keep in a cool dark place can tomatoes and corn boil the corn on the cob when it is in nice order for roasting twenty minutes over a good fire and cut off while hot have your tomatoes skinned and rubbed to a smooth pulp put in two measures of them for every one of the cut corn salt as for the table stirring it well in and bring to a hard boil then can quickly and as soon as they are cold set away in a cool dark place preserved green corn boil on the cob until the milk ceases to flow when the grain is pricked cut off the corn and pack in stone jars in the following order a layer of salt at the bottom half an inch deep then one of corn two inches in depth another half inch of salt and so on until the jar is nearly filled let the topmost layer of salt be double the depth of the others and pour over all melted not hot lard press upon this when nearly hard thick white paper cut to fit the mouth of the jar keep in a cool place soak overnight before using it green corn is difficult to can but i know it will keep well if put up in this way and strange to tell be so fresh after the night's soaking as to require salt when you boil it for the table should the top layer be musty dig lower still and you will probably be rewarded for the search end of section forty nine section fifty of common sense in the household this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b common sense in the household a manual of practical housewifery by marion harlan brandied fruits and candies brandied fruits brandied peaches or pears four pounds fruit four pounds sugar one pint best white brandy make a syrup of the sugar and enough water to dissolve it let this come to a boil put the fruit in and boil five minutes having removed the fruit carefully let the syrup boil fifteen minutes longer or until it thickens well add the brandy and take the kettle at once from the fire pour the hot syrup over the fruit and seal if after the fruit is taken from the fire a reddish liquor oozes from it drain this off before adding the clear syrup put up in glass jars peaches and pears should be peeled for branding plums should be pricked and watched carefully for fear of bursting brandied cherries or berries make a syrup of a pound of sugar 
and a half gill of water for every two pounds of fruit heat to boiling stirring to prevent burning and pour over the berries while warm not hot let them stand together an hour put all into a preserving kettle and heat slowly boil five minutes take out the fruit with a perforated skimmer and boil the syrup twenty minutes add a pint of brandy for every five pounds of fruit pour over the berries hot and seal candies molasses candy one quart good molasses one half cup vinegar one cup sugar butter the size of an egg one teaspoonful saleratus baking soda dissolve the sugar in the vinegar mix with the molasses and boil stirring frequently until it hardens when dropped from the spoon into cold water then stir in the butter and soda the latter dissolved in hot water flavor to your taste give one hard final stir and pour into buttered dishes as it cools cut into squares for taffy or while soft enough to handle pull white into sticks using only the buttered tips of your fingers for that purpose sugar candy six cups of sugar one cup of vinegar one cup of water tablespoonful of butter put in at the last with one teaspoonful saleratus dissolved in hot water boil fast without stirring an hour or until it crisps in cold water pull white with the tips of your fingers since children must eat candy this is the best you can give them it is very nice flavor to taste end of section fifty section fifty one of common sense in the household this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b common sense in the household a manual of practical housewifery by marion harlan pickles use none but the best cider vinegar especially avoid the sharp colorless liquid sold under that name it is weak sulphuric acid warranted to riddle the coat of any stomach even that of an ostrich if that bird were so bereft of the instinct of self-preservation as to make a lunch of bright green cucumber pickle seven times a week if you boil pickles in bell metal do not let them stand in it one moment when it is off the fire and see for yourself that it is perfectly clean and newly scoured before the vinegar is put in keep pickles in glass or hard stoneware look them over every month remove the soft ones and if there are several of these drain off and scald the vinegar adding a cup of sugar for each gallon and pour hot over the pickles if they are keeping well throw in a liberal handful of sugar for every gallon and tie them up again this tends to preserve them and mellows the sharpness of the vinegar this does not apply to sweet pickle pickle well made is better when a year old than at the end of six months i have eaten walnut pickle ten years old that was very fine keep your pickles well covered with vinegar if you use ground spices tie them up in thin muslin bags cucumber or gherkin pickle choose small cucumbers or gherkins for this purpose they are more tender and look better on the table reject all over a finger in length and every one that is misshapen or specked however slightly pack in a stone jar or wooden bucket in layers strewing salt thickly between these cover the top layer out of sight with salt and pour on cold water enough to cover all lay a small plate or round board upon them with a clean stone to keep it down you may leave them in the brine for a week or a month stirring up from the bottom every other day if the longer time be sure your salt and water is strong enough to bear up an egg if you raise your own cucumbers pick them every day and drop in the pickle when you are ready to put them up throw away the brine with any cucumbers that may have softened under the process and lay the rest in cold fresh water for twenty-four hours change the water then for fresh and leave it for another day have a kettle ready lined with green vine leaves and lay the pickles evenly within it scattering powdered alum over the layers 
a bit of alum as large as a pigeon egg will be enough for a two-gallon kettleful fill with cold water cover with vine leaves three deep put a close lid or inverted pan over all and steam over a slow fire five or six hours not allowing the water to boil when the pickles are a fine green remove the leaves and throw the cucumbers into very cold water let them stand in it while you prepare the vinegar to one gallon allow a cup of sugar three dozen whole black peppers the same of cloves half as much allspice one dozen blades of mace boil five minutes put the cucumbers into a stone jar and pour the vinegar over them scalding hot cover closely two days afterwards scald the vinegar again and return to the pickles repeat this process three times more at intervals of two four and six days cover with a stoneware or wooden top tie stout cloth over this and keep in a cool dry place they will be ready for eating in two months examine every few weeks pickled mangoes young musk or nutmeg melons english mustard seed two handfuls mixed with scraped horseradish one handful mace and nutmeg pounded one teaspoonful chopped garlic two teaspoonfuls a little ginger whole peppercorns one dozen one half tablespoonful of ground mustard to a pint of the mixture one teaspoonful sugar to the same quantity one teaspoonful best salad oil to the same one teaspoonful celery seed cut a slit in the side of the melon insert your finger and extract all the seeds if you cannot get them out in this way cut a slender piece out saving it to replace but the slit is better lay the mangoes in strong brine for three days drain off the brine and freshen in pure water twenty-four hours green as you would cucumbers and lay in cold water until cold and firm fill with the stuffing sew up the slit or tie up with pack thread pack in a deep stone jar and pour scalding vinegar over them repeat this process three times more at intervals of two days then tie up and set away in a cool dry place they will not be ripe under four months but are very fine when they are they will keep several years pepper mangoes are put up in the same way using green peppers that are full grown but not tinged with red they are very good but your fingers will smart after thrusting them into the peppers to pull out the seeds for this purpose i have used first a small penknife to cut the core from its attachment to the stem end of the pepper then a smooth bit of stick to pry open the slit in the side and work out the loose core or bunch of seeds by the exercise of a little ingenuity you may spare yourself all suffering from this cause should your fingers burn badly anoint them with sweet oil and wear gloves that night cream will also allay the smart pickled cabbage yellow two gallons vinegar one pint white mustard seed four ounce ginger three ounce peppercorns one ounce allspice pounded fine two ounce cloves one ounce mace one ounce nutmeg two ounce turmeric one large handful of garlic chopped one handful scraped horseradish four pounds sugar two ounce celery seed three lemons sliced thin mix all and set in the sun for three days to prepare the cabbage cut in quarters leaving off the outer and green leaves and put in a kettle of boiling brine cook three minutes take out drain and cover thickly with salt spread out in the sun to dry then shake off the salt and cover with cold vinegar in which has been steeped enough turmeric to color it well leave it in this two weeks to draw out the salt and to plump the cabbage they are then ready to pack down in the seasoned vinegar do not use under six weeks or two months pickled cabbage purple quarter the cabbage lay in a wooden tray sprinkle thickly with salt and set in the cellar until next day drain off the brine wipe dry lay in the sun two hours and cover with cold vinegar for twelve hours prepare the pickle by seasoning enough vinegar to cover the cabbage with equal quantities of mace cloves whole white peppers a cup of sugar to every gallon of vinegar and a teaspoonful of celery seed for every pint pack the cabbage in a stone jar 
boil the vinegar and spices five minutes and pour on hot cover and set away in a cool dry place this will be ripe in six weeks pickled onions peel the onions which should be fine white ones not too large let them stand in strong brine for four days changing it twice heat more brine to a boil throw in the onions and boil three minutes throw them at once into cold water and leave them there four hours pack in jars interspersing with whole mace white peppercorns and cloves fill up with scalding vinegar in which you have put a cupful of sugar for every gallon cork while hot they will be ready for use in a month but will be better at the end of three months green beans and radish pods take young french or string beans and radish pods just before they change color green and pickle as you do cucumbers and gherkins nasturtium seed take the green seed after the flower has dried off lay in salt and water two days in cold water one day pack in bottles and cover with scalding vinegar seasoned with mace and white peppercorns and sweetened slightly with white sugar cork and set away four weeks before you use them they are an excellent substitute for capers pickled butternuts and walnuts gather them when soft enough to be pierced by a pin lay them in strong brine five days changing this twice in the meantime drain and wipe them with a coarse cloth pierce each by running a large needle through it and lay in cold water for six hours to each gallon of vinegar allow a cup of sugar three dozen each of whole cloves and black peppercorns half as much allspice and a dozen blades of mace boil five minutes pack the nuts in small jars and pour over them scalding hot repeat this twice within a week tie up and set away they will be good to eat in a month and very good too pickled cauliflower pick the whitest and closest bunches cut into small sprays or clusters plunge into a kettle of scalding brine and boil three minutes take them out lay upon a sieve or a cloth sprinkle thickly with salt and when dry brush this off cover with cold vinegar for two days setting the jar in the sun then pack carefully in glass or stoneware jars and pour over them scalding vinegar seasoned thus to one gallon allow a cup of white sugar a dozen blades of mace a tablespoonful of celery seed two dozen white peppercorns and some bits of red pepper pods a tablespoonful of coriander seed and the same of whole mustard boil five minutes repeat the scalding once a week for three weeks tie up and set away keep the cauliflowers under the vinegar by putting a small plate on top sliced cucumber pickle very nice two dozen large cucumbers sliced and boiled in vinegar enough to cover them one hour set aside in the hot vinegar to each gallon of cold vinegar allow one pound sugar one tablespoonful of cinnamon one teaspoonful ginger one teaspoonful black pepper one teaspoonful celery seed one teaspoonful of mace one teaspoonful allspice one teaspoonful cloves one tablespoonful turmeric one tablespoonful horseradish scraped one tablespoonful garlic sliced one half teaspoonful cayenne pepper put in the cucumbers and stew two hours the pickle will be ready for use as soon as it is cold pickled watermelon rind extremely nice equal weight of rind and white sugar one half ounce white ginger to a gallon of pickle one pint vinegar to every pound of sugar one tablespoonful turmeric to a gallon of pickle mace cloves and cinnamon to taste take the thickest rind you can get pare off the hard green rind also the soft inner pulp lay the pieces narrow strips or fanciful cuttings in brine strong enough to float an egg and let them remain in it ten days then soak in fair water changing it every day for ten days cover them with clear water in a preserving kettle heat slowly and boil five minutes take them out and plunge instantly into ice water leave them in this until next day give them another gentle boil of five minutes in strong alum water simmer carefully as a hard boil will injure them change directly from the alum to the ice water again and do not disturb them for four hours after a third boil of five minutes let them remain all night in the last water to make them tender 
next day add to enough water to cover the rind sufficient sugar to make it quite sweet but not a syrup simmer the rinds in this ten minutes throw the water away and spread them upon dishes to cool meanwhile prepare a second syrup allowing sugar equal in weight to the rind and half an ounce of sliced white ginger to a gallon of the pickle with a cup of water for every two pounds of sugar when the sugar is melted and the syrup quite hot but not boiling put in the rinds and simmer until they look quite clear take it out spread upon the dishes again while you add to the syrup a pint of vinegar for every pound of the sugar you have put in one tablespoonful of turmeric to a gallon of pickle mace cloves and cinnamon to taste boil this up return the rind to it and simmer fifteen minutes put up in glass jars it will be fit for use in two weeks this is a very handsome and delicious pickle although it may seem to be made upon the principle of the frenchman's pebble soup green tomato soy two gallons tomatoes green and sliced without peeling twelve good-sized onions also sliced two quarts vinegar one quart sugar two tablespoonfuls salt two tablespoonfuls ground mustard two tablespoonfuls black pepper ground one tablespoonful allspice one tablespoonful cloves mix all together and stew until tender stirring often lest they should scorch put up in small glass jars this is a most useful and pleasant sauce for almost every kind of meat and fish sweet tomato pickle very good seven pounds ripe tomatoes peeled and sliced three and a half pounds sugar one ounce cinnamon and mace mixed one ounce cloves one quart of vinegar mix all together and stew an hour ripe tomato pickle number two two gallons tomatoes peeled but not sliced one pint vinegar two pounds sugar mace nutmeg and cinnamon to taste put all on together heat slowly to a boil and simmer one hour put up in glass jars sweet pickle plums pears peaches or other fruits seven pounds fruit pared four pounds white sugar one pint strong vinegar mace cinnamon and cloves pear peaches and pears prick plums and damsons tomatoes globes or husk tomatoes otherwise known as ground plums put into the kettle with alternate layers of sugar heat slowly to a boil add the vinegar and spice boil five minutes take out the fruit with a perforated skimmer and spread upon dishes to cool boil the syrup thick pack the fruit in glass jars and pour the syrup on boiling hot examine every few days for the first month and should it show signs of fermenting set the jars uncovered in a kettle of water and heat until the contents are scalding husk tomatoes a fruit which looks like a hybrid between the tomato and plum and are particularly nice put up in this way pickled peaches ten pounds fruit pared four and a half pounds sugar one quart vinegar mace cinnamon and cloves to taste lay the peaches in the sugar for an hour drain off every drop of syrup and put over the fire with about a cup of water boil until the scum ceases to rise skim put in the fruit and boil five minutes take out the peaches with a perforated skimmer and spread upon dishes to cool add the vinegar and spices to the syrup boil fifteen minutes longer and pour over the fruit in glass jars pickled peaches unpeeled rub the fur off with a coarse cloth and prick each peach with a fork heat in just enough water to cover them until they almost boil take them out and add to the water sugar in the following proportions for every seven pounds of fruit three pounds of sugar boil fifteen minutes skim and add three pints of vinegar one tablespoonful each of allspice mace and cinnamon one teaspoonful celery seed one teaspoonful cloves put the spices in thin muslin bags boil all together ten minutes then put in the fruit and boil until they can be pierced with a straw take out the fruit with a skimmer and spread upon dishes to cool boil the syrup until thick pack the peaches in glass jars and pour this over them scalding hot you may pickle pears in the same way without peeling pickle cherries 
morella or large red tart cherries as fresh as you can get them to every quart allow a large cup of vinegar and two tablespoonfuls of sugar with a dozen whole cloves and half a dozen blades of mace put the vinegar and sugar on to heat with the spices boil five minutes turn out into a covered stoneware vessel cover and let it get perfectly cold strain out the spices fill small jars three-quarters of the way to the top with fruit and pour the cold vinegar over them cork or cover tightly leave the stems on the cherries picklet four large crisp cabbages chopped fine one quart onions chopped fine two quarts of vinegar or enough to cover the cabbage two pounds brown sugar two tablespoonfuls ground mustard two tablespoonfuls black pepper two tablespoonfuls cinnamon two tablespoonfuls turmeric two tablespoonfuls celery seed one tablespoonful allspice one tablespoonful mace one tablespoonful alum pulverized pack the cabbage and onions in alternate layers with a little salt between them let them stand until next day then scald the vinegar sugar and spices together and pour over the cabbage and onion do this three mornings in succession on the fourth put all together over the fire and heat to a boil let them boil five minutes when cold pack in small jars it is fit for use as soon as cold but keeps well end of section fifty one Section 52 of Common Sense in the Household. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Piotr Natter. Common Sense in the Household. A Manual of Practical Housewifery by Marion Harland. Drinks. Coffee never buy the ground coffee put up in packages if you can get any other the mere fact that after they have gone to the expense of the machinery and labor requisite for grinding it the manufacturers can sell it cheaper per pound than grocers can the whole grains roasted or raw should convince any sensible person that it is adulterated with other and less expensive substances be that as it may coffee loses its aroma so rapidly after it is ground that it is worth your while to buy it whole either in small quantities freshly roasted or raw and roasted yourself or stand by and see your respectable grocer grind what you have just bought you can roast in a pan in the oven stirring every few minutes or in the same upon the top of the range stir often and roast quickly to a bright brown not a dull black while still hot beat up the white of an egg with a tablespoonful of melted butter and stir up well with it this will tend to preserve the flavor grind just enough at a time for a single making to make coffee boiled one full coffee cup one half pint of ground coffee one quart of boiling water white of an egg and crushed shell of same one half cup of cold water to settle it stir up the eggshell and the white beaten with the coffee and a very little cold water and mix gradually with the boiling water in the coffee boiler stir from the sides and top as it boils up boil pretty fast twelve minutes pour in the cold water and take from the fire setting gently upon the hearth to settle in five minutes pour it off carefully into your silver china or britannia coffee pot which should be previously well scalded sent to table hot to make coffee without boiling there are so many patent coffee pots for this purpose and the directions sold with these are so minute that i need give that i need give only a few general rules here allow rather more coffee to a given quantity of water than if it were to be boiled and have it ground very fine put the coffee in the uppermost compartment pour on the water very slowly until the fine coffee is saturated then more rapidly the water should be boiling shut down the top and the coffee ought to be ready when it has gone through the double or treble set of strainers should it not be strong enough run it through again cafe au lait one pint very strong made coffee fresh and hot one pint boiling milk 
the coffee should be poured off the grounds through a fine strainer thin muslin is the best material into the table coffee pot add the milk and set the pot where it will keep hot for five minutes before pouring it out tea two teaspoonfuls of tea to one large cupful of boiling water scald the teapot well put in the tea and covering close set it on the stove or range one minute to warm pour on enough boiling water to cover it well and let it stand ten minutes to draw keep the lid of the pot shut and set in a warm place but do not let it boil fill up with as much boiling water as you will need and send hot to the table after pouring into a heated china or silver pot the bane of tea in many households is unboiled water it can never extract the flavor as it should although it steep for hours the kettle should not only steam but bubble and puff in a hard boil before you add water from it to the tea leaves boiling after the tea is made injures the flavor either by deadening or making it rank and herby the english custom of making tea upon the breakfast or tea table is fast gaining ground in america it is at once the best and prettiest way of preparing the beverage chocolate six tablespoonfuls grated chocolate to each pint of water as much milk as you have water sweeten to taste put on the water boiling hot rub the chocolate smooth in a little cold water and stir into the boiling water boil twenty minutes add the milk and boil ten minutes more stirring frequently you can sweeten upon the fire or in the cups cocoa nibs or shells one quart of boiling water two ounces of cocoa nibs one quart fresh milk wet the shells or nibs up with a little cold water add to the boiling and cook one hour and a half strain put in the milk let it heat almost to boiling and take from the fire this is excellent for invalids prepared cocoa one quart of water boiling two ounces prepared cocoa baker's is best one quart of milk make as you do chocolate only boil nearly an hour before you add the milk afterward heating almost to boiling sweeten to taste milk tea for children one pint fresh milk and the same of boiling water sweeten to taste raspberry royal four quarts ripe berries one quart best cider vinegar one pound white sugar one pint fine brandy put the berries in a stone jar pour the vinegar over them add the sugar and pound the berries to a paste with a wooden pestle or mash with a spoon let them stand in the sun for hours strain and squeeze out all the juice and put in the brandy seal up in bottles lay them on their sides in the cellar and cover with sawdust stir two tablespoonfuls into a tumbler of ice water when you wish to use it raspberry vinegar put the raspberries into a stone vessel and mash them to pulp add cider vinegar no spacious imitation but the genuine article enough to cover it well stand in the sun twelve hours and all night in the cellar stir up well occasionally during this time strain and put as many fresh berries in the jar as you took out pour the strained vinegar over them mash and set in the sun all day strain a second time next day to each quart of this juice allow one pint of water four pounds of sugar best white for every three pints of this liquid juice and water mingled place over a gentle fire and stir until the sugar is dissolved heat slowly to boiling skimming off the scum and as soon as it fairly boils take off and strain bottle while warm and seal the corks with sealing wax or beeswax and rosin a most refreshing and pleasant drink blackberry vinegar is made in the same manner as raspberry allowing five and a half pounds of sugar to a three pints of juice and water blackberry cordial one quart of blackberry juice one pound white sugar half an ounce of grated nutmeg half an ounce of powdered cinnamon one quarter of an ounce allspice one quarter of an ounce cloves one pint best brandy 
tie the spices in thin muslin bag boil juice sugar and spices together fifteen minutes skimming well add the brandy set aside in a closely covered vessel to cool when perfectly cold strain out the spices and bottle sealing the corks elderberry wine eight quarts of berries four quarts of boiling water poured over the berries let it stand twelve hours stirring now and then strain well pressing out all the juice add three pounds of sugar to four quarts of juice one ounce powdered cinnamon half an ounce powdered cloves boil five minutes and set away to ferment in a stone jar with a cloth thrown lightly over it when it has done fermenting rack it off carefully not to disturb the lees bottle and cork down well cranberry wine mash ripe berries to a pulp put into a stone jar add one quart of water to two quarts of berries stir well and let it stand two days strain through a double flannel bag mash a second supply of berries equal in quantity to the first and cover with this liquid steep two days more strain add one pound of sugar for three quarts of liquor and boil five minutes let in ferment in lightly covered jars rack off and bottle this is said to be very good for scrofula strawberry wine three quarts of strawberries mashed and strained to the juice there should be about a quart if the berries are ripe and fresh add one quarter of water one pound of sugar stir up well and ferment in a clean sweet cask leaving the bung out when the working subsides close tightly or rack off into bottles this is said by those who have tasted it to be very good currant wine pick stem mash and strain the currants which should be very ripe to one quart of juice add three quarter pound white sugar half a pint of water stir all together long and well put into a clean cask leaving out the bunk and covering the whole with a bit of lace or mosquito net let it ferment about four weeks rack off when it is quite still and bottle jamaica gingerbread one bottle of jamaica ginger extract one ounce of cream tartar six quarts of water one pound of sugar stir until the sugar is melted then put in the grated peel of a lemon and heat until blood warm add the tablespoonful of brewer's yeast stir well and bottle wiring down the corks it will be fit for use in four days this is a refreshing and healthful beverage mixed with pounded ice in hot weather raisin wine one pound of white sugar two pounds of raisins seeded and chopped one lemon all the juice and half the grated peel two gallons of boiling water put all into a stone jar and sit every day for a week strain them and bottle it it will be fit for use in ten days lemonade or sherbet three lemons to a quart of water six tablespoonfuls of sugar pare the yellow peel from the lemons and unless you mean to use the sherbet immediately leave it out it gives a bitter taste to the sugar if left long in it slice and squeeze the lemons upon the sugar add a very little water and let them stand fifteen minutes then fill up with water ice well stir and pour out orangeat is made in the same manner substituting oranges for lemons strawberry sherbet delicious one quart of strawberries three pints of water one lemon the juice only one tablespoonful orange flower water three quarter pound white sugar the strawberries should be fresh and ripe crushed to a smooth paste add the rest of the ingredients except the sugar and let it stand three hours strain over the sugar squeezing the cloth hard stir until the sugar is dissolved strain again and set in ice for two hours or more before you use it regent's punch fine one pound of loaf sugar or rock candy one large cup of strong black tea made three wine glasses of brandy three wine glasses of rum one bottle of champagne two oranges juice only 
three lemons, juice only, one large lump of ice. This receipt was given me by a gentleman of the old school, a connoisseur in the matter of beverages as of cookery. Tell your readers, he writes, that better punch was never brewed. I give receipt and message together. Roman punch. Three coffee cups of lemonade, strong and sweet, one glass of champagne, one glass of rum, two oranges, juice only, three eggs, whites only, well whipped, one half of a pound of powdered sugar beaten into the stiffened whites. You must ice abundantly, or, if you prefer, freeze. Sherry cobbler. Several slices of pineapple, cut in quarters, a lemon, sliced thin, an orange, sliced thin, one half cup of powdered sugar, one tumbler of sherry wine, ice water, pounded ice. Take a wide mouth quart pitcher and lay the sliced fruit in order at the bottom, sprinkling sugar and pounded ice between the layers. Cover with sugar and ice and let all stand together five minutes. Add then two tumblers of water and all the sugar and stir well to dissolve this. Fill the pitcher nearly full of pounded ice, pour in the wine and stir up from the bottom until the ingredients are thoroughly mixed. In pouring it out, put a slice of each kind of fruit in each goblet before adding the liquid. It is best sucked through a straw or glass tube. Nectar. Make as above, substituting a little rose water for the pineapple and squeezing out the juice of the orange and lemon instead of putting in the slices. Sprinkle nutmeg on the top. This forms a delicious and refreshing drink for invalids. Claret punch. One bottle of claret, a quarter the quantity of ice water, two lemons sliced, one half cup of powdered sugar. Cover the sliced lemon with sugar and let it stand ten minutes. Add the water. Stir hard for a whole minute and pour in the wine. Put pounded ice in each glass before filling with the mixture. Eggnog. Six eggs, whites and yolks beaten separately and very stiff one quart of rich milk, one half cup of sugar, one half pint best brandy, flavor with nutmeg. Stir the yolks into the milk with the sugar, which should first be beaten with the yolks. Next comes the brandy. Lastly, whip in the whites of three eggs. Cherry bounce. Four pounds of sour and the same quantity of sweet cherries, two and a half pounds of white sugar, one gallon of best whiskey. Crush the cherries to pieces by pounding in a deep wooden vessel with a smooth billet of wood. Beat hard enough to crack all the stones. Put into a deep stone jar, mix in the sugar well, and cover with the whiskey. Shake around briskly and turn into a demijohn. Cork tightly and let it stand a month, shaking it every day and another month without touching it. Then strain off and bottle. It is better a year than six months old. If the Maltese cross appears but seldom in the section devoted to drinks, it is because most of my information respecting their manufacture is second-hand. In my own family they are so little used except in sickness that I should not dare to teach others, upon my own authority, how to prepare them. Indeed, the temptation I felt to omit many of them reminded me of a remark made, introductory of preserves, by one of the complete housewives, who, all five together, drove me to the verge of an attack of congestion of the brain before I had been a housekeeper for a week. Said this judicious lady, preserves of all kinds are expensive and indigestible and therefore poisonous. Therefore, again, I shall not give directions for their manufacture, except to remark that barberries stewed in molasses are economical and a degree less hurtful than most others of that class of compounds. Then I reflected that I might, upon the same principle, exclude all receipts in which coconut is used, because it is rank poison to me, while a dear friend of mine would as soon touch arsenic as an egg. A large majority of the beverages I have named are highly medicinal, and deserve a place in the housekeeper's calendar on that account. Many, so far from being hurtful, are beneficial to a weak stomach, or a system sufficiently under general debility. None which contain alcohol in any shape should be used daily, much less semi or tri-daily by a well person. 
this principle reduced to practice would prove the preventative ounce which would cure all over the land the need for temperance societies and inebriate asylums End of section fifty two